welcome to another awesome episode of the Chain Leader Show. Uh, we've got a fellow leader on today, a, a absolute force in the blockchain industry and a few other industries as well. Uh, he's successfully helped numerous companies spread their message, uh, attract impactful attention, and ultimately grow their projects and companies. Um, as a consistent contributor to well-known publications like Entrepreneur and The Next Web, he's proven himself as a thought leader on the forefront of results-focused PR. We want to take some time and welcome Simon Moser, Director of Polygrowth, to the show. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. James, how are you doing? I'm doing great, man, like always. Just awesome. uh, some torrential rain here in Bangkok, but... Uh... Hopefully it doesn't uh, creep into the audio. We'll see. No, no, <laughs> oh, man. Well, Simon, you know, one of the, the, the main reasons, as I described in, in that intro, uh, one of the main reasons we wanted to have you on is just because of, of your work and your results and, and what it is that you've been doing for the last few years in the blockchain space, in the cannabis space, uh, in the tech space. Um, man, tell us a little bit about what, what's been going on with you there at Polygrowth and even with your other projects. Sure. So um, at Polygrowth, um, we originally started out as an agency that focused on companies in the blockchain sector. Um, I was very passionate about blockchain during the time and uh, my co-founders as well. And um, we just noticed that um, many blockchain companies um, are having issues with bringing across their messages and getting um, media coverage for that. So media coverage and media services were in high demand. That's something that we noticed very early. And that's why we decided, hey, we want to help those companies to, to bring out their messages, to um, tell um, potential investors why they should be interested in the project, what the benefits might be. And um, yeah, that's how we started. And later on, um, we also started working with other um, industries. Right now, we're saying that we focus on new markets. So besides blockchain, there's also cannabis um, that we're very passionate about, um, as well as other um, tech sectors like AI, IoT, um, software as a service, etc. So basically newer markets, new industry with, uh, industries with a lot of growth potential. Um, and that's what we focus on because that's where PR actually is one of the um, most effective marketing tools because you somehow have to distinguish yourself from your competitors and PR right. is a great tool for that. And besides uh, Polygrowth, um, I've also co-founded Strain Insider in 2018, which is um, right now one of the biggest um, cannabis media outlets focused on the European cannabis market. Um, we, I think we, we've we um, had some great um, growth going on there. Um, made some very nice connections there, interviewed some very high tier, high profile people. And, um, yeah, so I'm generally, I would describe myself as a media guy. I'm working uh, both on both sides. Um, one, on the one hand, I'm working uh, with my media company, Strain Insider. And on the other hand, I'm working as a PR specialist, uh, with Polygrowth. And in addition to that, of course, I'm also very interested in content marketing and other forms, um, of marketing. Well, Simon, uh, you found a lot of success in these in industries by, by essentially consistently delivering really high quality results. Uh, we want to know the secret, man. You know, we've, we've talked to a lot of different agencies and we've seen a lot of things uh, happening in the industry as far as uh, the, the quality of, of PR that comes out and the quality of results. But you seem to be knocking it out of the park with every client. We we want to know, you know, what, what what's the secret, man? Uh, thanks. Um, I think the secret is um, that I'm sitting on both uh, sides of the table. So I think that's very useful. Like on the as I said, on the one hand, um, I run a PR agency. Um, I talk with journalists all the time about PR opportunities and also with clients. But on the other hand. I, first of all, I'm also a freelance journalist. I write for Entrepreneur, for The Next Web, for other high-profile sites. I also wrote for Strain Insider, and I also run Strain Insider as a media company. So I receive, actually, I receive a lot of pitches um, from other PR agencies, um, and I know like this is this looks like something that could be interesting. 
or even not, and um, then use that knowledge in my own pitching. But I also know um, what journalists um, consider newsworthy through that because I, I write my own articles. I, I manage the content process as Trend Insider, so I have influence on that as well. And I just, um, uh, in addition to that, I also got um, access to our analytics at Strain Insider, so I also know which articles um, are doing well. With, and of course, most media companies and most journalists are most interested in um, getting clicks and traffic. Um, and that's where 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 I want to use that knowledge to to frame my pitching into um, and, and and pitch articles that are actually read by people that people find interesting, and thus journalists find will find interesting as well. Love it, love it, man. Um, you know, and the one thing that you talk about a lot, and I think this is a particular interesting topic, um, especially for someone being introduced to PR, and that's um, the concept of paid PR versus earned media. Um, mm -hmm. Could you speak a little bit about that and the difference um, and why you feel earned media is a better option? Yeah, sure. So um, I would say there are three um, distinctions with regard to media placements. First of all, the sponsored content, which is obviously paid content, um, which has a sponsored tag. Um, most companies use it to um, um, promote a certain product or maybe the whole company in a, in a story. Um, however, I would say, like, I'm, I'm not that interested in sponsored content right now because most consumers, um, they've meanwhile realized, hey, this is a sponsored um in earlier years, maybe they didn't see the sponsor tag, but right now everyone is, is internet is an internet expert. Everyone uses the internet all the time, so consumers can distinguish between sponsored and non-sponsored content, and um, that's I think is a problem. And thus, it requires really a lot of experience um, to 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 uh, create successful sponsored content. And many, honestly, many people don't have that. Many PR specialists don't have that, and many marketers don't have that. So that's something I'm not interested in personally. But um, the second distinction is, um, or the second option for um, PR content is um, the pay to play PR. And that's, I think, is something um, that many people are not aware of, um, but that almost every PR agency uses. So um, just to give you like a brief introduction to that, um, pay to play is essentially when a PR agency or a PR manager um, reaches out to journalists and offers them a compensation to uh, publish an article on their client. In most cases, the compensation is uh, cash um, or in the crypto space, also like cryptocurrencies. <laughs> and um, it's it's actually very common. So uh, at the end of the day, the, the, um, the writers or the journalists will publish an article um, on a company or, or even mention, just mention the company, brand mention, um, and then uh, upload it uh, under the profile. Um, in addition to that, there are also some um, new sites um, which, like, obviously accept uh, pay-to-play PR. They don't. They, they accept money for an article and don't um, add a sponsor tag to it. That's also, meanwhile, it has become quite common. And like I said, every PR agency I know of uses pay-to-play PR. It's not something that's per se um, a bad thing to do, at least from a PR perspective. Um, but it also for at the same time, it's, it's not really, um, something that I would recommend for most companies because, um, as you might have imagined, pay to play PR can become very expensive. Um, most publications are very, um, overpriced. People are willing to pay ridiculous sums for a feature on Forbes, for example. And it's definitely in most cases, like in 90% of cases, it's not worth it to, um, invest in pay to play PR, but instead, um, I would recommend going for the third option, which is earned media. And, and earned media, essentially no one is getting paid, um, well, besides the PR manager, of course. Um, so in this, uh, for earned media, a PR manager reaches out uh, to journalists and um, publications in the traditional sense. Um, they offer a nice story um, that interests or that engages the readers um, of the journalists' articles. And um, at the end of the day, the journalist will write about it because he's personally interested and he thinks it's a good story. He thinks that the story will attract readers. And um, that's why earned media is in most cases very effective um, and also very cost effective. 
because um, if you have a successful um, campaign of earned media outreach, um, you can reach a really a high number of publications, also high tier, high profile publications um, like TechCrunch, New York Times, etc. And in addition to that, um, not sure if you've heard of the cascade effect of PR. Um, sometimes when a high profile media outlet like um, Forbes or TechCrunch or so um, publish an article, then other media outlets um, just pick up the story and publish it themselves on their own platform. Like they rewrite the content and republish it um, to, to get on the train. And um, that's something that is very common for earned media. And we've, we've actually like, this, this has happened quite a few times uh, for our clients. We published an article on past company and on the next days, um, Bitcoinist and Cointelegraph and other high profile publications basically rewrote it and republished it. So we got free PR, um, on mass and, um, had some great results through that. Um, and that's why I think earned media is in the vast majority of cases, the best um, PR strategy and um, can also be used by all, even smaller companies. It's uh, it just can work for everyone. Excellent, man. That's that's powerful, and and really, it's just diving into you know the concept of authenticity and and actually yeah. creating. Uh, uh, a reason for people to care. So, you know, you care about your clients and you're speaking yeah. with journalists that you've passionately crafted this uh, this pitch to them after doing some research and, and, you know, trying to figure out what they would care about. And then from that aspect, they're like, hey, Simon just brought us a, a, a great subject to talk about. He brought us a great article. Uh, let's get this out there. And then from there, they actually care about, you know, your yeah. pitch. They care about that that client. And so that's that's creating a yeah. best value, man. That's creating a yeah. best value. And exactly. That, and also, um, if I may interrupt you here, um, this value is, increases even further when we have a situation where a journalist really likes a company that we pitched. Because in some cases, they, they, they become really passionate fans and they will continue to, to update their readers about the company and publish more and more articles without any work from our side. So it's a very, wow. very sustainable um, strategy that is um, that can create very long lasting results. I love it, man. I love it. And along those same lines, you know, we we've seen, especially over the last couple of months, uh, but, but just this year. We've seen a huge, huge um, increase in the attention in the DeFi space and those DeFi projects. Uh, so decentralized finance is big, especially in crypto right now. We know there's billions of dollars that have flown into it. And what what are you seeing as you know some of the challenges that that your style of earned media or earned media in general? Um, can help with those projects? Mm -hmm. um, well, yeah, so first of all, I think right now in the DeFi space, um, many marketers and many projects focus on generating a hype. Um, it's a, in my opinion, it's a similar situation as in 2017. Um, there are a lot of investors who are just throwing money um, at the next best project. And um, they, they all want to get this um, significant price increases um, to, to, to make money, obviously. Um, but yeah, that's a really risky strategy. Um, but of course, hype is not, not a bad thing um, in general. But still, um, this could quickly develop into a pump and dump. And after that, the coin is uh, or the project is forgotten by the investors and by, by the enthusiasts of the industry. So I think um, the DeFi space definitely has a problem um, or will have a problem to um, to 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 get like um, loyal investors, a loyal tribe, a loyal community um, and not getting overshadowed by other projects that might be doing something that sounds more fancy or um, that is just newer because that's how it is right now. People are just trying to get a project, uh, trying to find a project that, that might go uh, up in value soon and um, I think earned media can help here um, especially regular um, earned media campaigns can help here to create very um, 
in that relationships um, with uh, potential investors and also create like a, a really strong tribe um, that supports the project that goes above and beyond to help it. It goes on YouTube, makes videos about it, goes on steamit.com or Medium yeah. and posts articles about it, analyze it and, and also show it to their friends um, and really create like a very sustainable um, user base or, or investor base for, for a project. And that's where I think um, Earth Media might be very effective. A few weeks ago, a friend of mine, um, he told me about a, a new DeFi, uh, DeFi project and said, hey, um, like he's a trader. And um, I occasionally he gives me some signals to buy stuff and I just like uh, put a little bit of money in it and see how it goes. And this was one of those, like it's just uh, listed on Uniswap and um, like the traditional uh, DeFi project you're currently seeing around in the space. And um, I just invest a little bit of money and go, went into the Telegram group, subscribed it. And um, a few days later, um, they announced like a big partnership with a PR agency um, which, and they, 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 they claimed like the PR agency is, uh, one of the biggest in the world and the best in the world. And, um, I'm not going to say its name, but, um, it, it, it seemed like something was quite exaggerated. And, um, then a few days more later, the, the agency, um, announced like a big plan, a big PR campaign and a strategy. And they actually, everything, everything was centered around generating a hype, but it was completely bullshit. I can tell you that. Um, <laughs> they, they actually created a website which was titled like PR strategy for this project. And then they made like a timeline and what they did that their entire PR strategy was pay to play and sponsored articles, which was quite obvious because they said in this month, we're going to publish coin telegraph article in yeah. this month, we're going bitcoin.com in this month. We do that. You obviously can tell that if you run a nerd media campaign and, um, and at the end of the day, I checked one of their PR um, releases that they published um, last week. And it was like uh, the articles had almost no views. They were not listed on the homepage um, of, of the websites because it was pay to play. Um, some were sponsored articles. So it's like, that's that's not a PR strategy. Um, I don't even know what to call this. And it was very obvious that it was just to generate hype and it's a pump and dump and now the investors are catching out. So. Um, and I think the project actually isn't, uh, is, is something that I think their goal is to, to create something that lasts, but obviously it, it won't last this way. Um, that, that's not sustainable in my opinion. Yeah. And, and Simon, one question there is, is really what, what are projects supposed to be doing in this situation? You know, even the reason why James and I started Chain Leads, our company is to help the projects find you know, the ideal agencies to work with, the ideal advisors, the ideal marketers. And often that approach of, hey, we're just going to create hype and, you know, we've, we've got this experience. That's what's often selling the founders and the, 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 you know, the CEOs of these projects. But in your opinion, what do they need to be focused on to not make that same mistake? I think that is very uh, oftentimes those are the short term vision to make a quick buck. But the mm -hmm. long term vision often has uh, more value attached to it. If you can truly build uh, a product or a service or, or leverage the, the blockchain technology um, in order to to solve a problem. So with that focus by these guys and they're doing the popular thing. How, how do you suggest that they, they change that mindset and flip that switch to, to get great results, but do it in a, a more focused and earned media way? Um, well, I think one thing um, that they should really try to employ in their marketing strategy, um, even, if they, like, even if they want to go for a hype campaign, that's fine, in my opinion, but you ha simultaneously, you have still um, tried to grow your sustainable uh, channels. So this could be earned media on the one uh, hand. You could, for example, you could either work with a PR agency or hire an in-house PR manager who takes care of your um, earned media and does regular outreach. So at least once a month, you should do a big media outreach, pitch some things and an interesting story about your company and um, just try to get some organic media. And at the same time, I definitely um, 
recommend to start content marketing. Um, as you all know, content is the king. And yeah. um, if you if you just post high quality content, and that's important, I want to emphasize that it's important that you just upload high quality content, no matter if it's on YouTube, on Twitter, um, on your own blog, or even on other platforms. I, I think there are so many ways to to distribute content in this day in this day and age. Um, you, whatever you do, you just have to focus on generating high quality content. And in the end, I think it it will always pay off. Just it, wh whatever you're uh, doing, it's important that you have someone uh, in your team or maybe an advisor, um, an external advisor, who can um, provide you with the insights of what content actually um, performs well, what what converts well, what uh, ranks well on Google. So those are very important aspects that you should definitely um, try to focus on and then of course just provide as much value as you can and tell the people that you're um that you can actually provide that value awesome man those are some real uh quality gold nuggets of information i mean um it's great stuff and you know i think you perfectly segued into what we also wanted to ask you about which, you know, when it comes to marketing, obviously we want to ask ourselves the right questions when we're going to do any sort of marketing strategy where we want to figure out, you know, what are we getting out of this? What is our end game here? What is the goal? And, you know, the goal at the end of the day is to acquire business, to build a brand. We're looking at achieving particular goals depending on what that strategy is. And one of the things that you talk about is the idea of evergreen conversion oriented PR. And thinking of it with these different angles, because as you said, you have these different, um, you know, not knowledge uh, knowledge sets, and you're looking at it from having these different knowledge sets and coming at it at a different angle. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, yeah. So the, I think there are mainly two types um, of content that are working very right now. So on the on the one hand, it's the the fast um, paced content, like um, on a social media site, which you post it on a day and two days later, it's forgotten in most cases. Um, another example that is very um, popular right now in the blockchain space, at least, are um, director of memes, which I think is something very interesting. Um, so you have someone dedicated towards generating memes and building the community, which I think is a very interesting idea. And obviously, it, it's working very well for some people. But then on the other hand, it's the sustainable content, the evergreen content. And that's what I think, um, or what, what I personally am very interested in, what I think has a great potential um, to build a business and to, to drive um, very valuable leads um, to your business uh, in, the, in the long run. And um, yeah, so what, what we do there, um, we mainly focus on, um, on article content, on, on written content. Um, which uh, aims to educate people, which, aims, which offers people a solution to a problem that they currently have. And that's the beauty of search engines. People can actually go in there, go on Google, and just type in the problem that they have and, mm -hmm. and see what the internet offers as a solution. And our goal is, in, in our evergreen conversion PR, um, our goal is to create or to 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 um, provide them that solution. And in the best scenario, that solution is the one of our client or even of ourselves, depending on who, we, who we're working with or what the, the aim of the um, conversion PR campaign is. Um, yes, yeah, so in, in the real world, uh, how this looks like is um, that we are writing very in-depth articles um, about um, how to do something like a guide, how to buy Bitcoin is a very um, straightforward example, I would say. Um, or we're writing lists um, with potential solutions. So some people um, are looking for an exchange. We have a we have a client as an exchange, so we want to write an article top um, ten cryptocurrency exchanges, and then obviously um, have our client somewhere in the in the higher ranks um, and really like just show how the client could um, benefit um, the the person who's looking for an exchange. Um, so yeah, I think that's very um, a very um, sustainable marketing technique and also very effective marketing technique. And the, the aim of, of all conversion-focused PR is um, to generate a positive return on investment as fast as possible. I love it. 
and and, and Simon, even even with that, I, I we've been a part of so many conversations with with projects, tokens, exchanges, um, other PR agencies, and what often does not come up is that topic. So very rarely do we hear about conversion fo- focused PR. Um, yeah. If you were to even just put a percentage on on what a project or an exchange or, or, or you know, something, a blockchain company, if they they have a budget of, of say, 10 grand uh, a month, what percentage of that budget do you think should be focused on conversion uh, PR? Well, that's a good question. I mean, in the end, it depends on the niche. Um, like on the particular niche that the company is in, if they're an exchange, if they offer services, and also what kind of services. Um, but I would think they should put at least 25% in their conversion PR um, budget, potentially up to 50%. Um, but only, of course, only if, if if the opportunities allow that, if there are, if there's enough opportunities to promote the company in that way um, and to, to actually bring business to it. Um, of course, one could also start a campaign with publishing a lot conversion PR. So you could start with um, going 50-50 in the beginning and then decrease it over time. Because as I said, it's an, it's an evergreen article that we were focused on. And um, once they are live, you, you don't have to nurture them anymore. So, so they are there, they're generating leads, they're generating traffic. And at one point, you, you probably have a very good... Um, <laughs> You have a lot of articles on the internet, and that's where you don't have to um, like publish a lot more. Um, although there's always uh, new angles that you can cover, so um, definitely a lot of room there. Awesome, man. Cool, cool, very good, man. And um, you know, to, to take that one part, which is an awesome part, but let's let's look at the big picture of um, PR for a blockchain business. Um, what does that look like to you in most of these situations? Um, how often are there um, pub- giving into publications? What types of articles um, do you see that work really well with blockchain? Like what what are the like looking at the ten thousand foot aerial view? What what does a typical campaign look like in the blockchain space? Mm. Well, that, that really depends as well. Um, first of all, on the PR agencies. So I think there, there are many differences between the various PR agencies in the blockchain space. Um, I think uh, a good PR campaign for a blockchain company, um, should have, if it's like a, if they have news, um, or if they, if they have a reason to do PR now, like any major news, any developments from the company, um, a new product, a new service, anything like that. Um, that requires more PR attention. And um, that's why I would, uh, in, in such PR campaign, I would do at least four outreach rounds um, a month to, to, to pitch four different angles and do that for around three months. So a very high intensity. And at the same time, also put out these evergreen PR pieces, which are um, not the same as the, as the PR outreach. It's two different angles there. Um, and in addition to that, um, also start with thought leadership. So trying to 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 get the mention somewhere to provide journalists with precious insights. Um, but also in, in for many industries, this makes a lot of sense to start contributing uh, contributing articles to other um, niche uh, publications or bigger like mainstream publications that can also have quite a lot to establish credibility to make business partnerships. And, and as you know, I personally, I contribute to Entrepreneur and the Next Web and other pro- high profile sites. This has helped actually a lot. I like my business has grown significantly through that. I met a lot of people through that. And that's definitely the case for many other industries. I know people who founded a tech company, um, and also contribute to these sites and they get a lot of referrals through that. So, um, that's also something I would include. Um, but yeah, I think um, that's pretty much it. Um, what, what the most important aspects about a PR campaign are for a blockchain company. Awesome. Simon, I, I think you're giving away too many secrets, man. Too many secrets, but man, you know, that's a couple that's, things that's, just for your own. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, you know, that's really what 
what this podcast is about. We really want to take time to, to have these conversations with people like you who are forward thinking, who are in it for the long haul, who really want to see this industry grow. So if if essentially if I'm a, a project and we're about to launch and and you know we still have some capital and, and we're looking for someone and we're looking for some strategy there, what are you suggesting that uh, this new project do in order to make an impactful uh, break into the market? Yeah, so to prepare, um, I think that the, the best thing that they can do is the thought leadership aspect that I talked about earlier. So starting to contribute um, to high profile sites, Cointelegraph, maybe if you're a blockchain company or Coindesk, um, because that adds credibility. And once you're launching, um, people will research you. That's that's just how the blockchain space works. They might even call your employer, uh, your previous employer. I, I saw things like that happen. So it's a lot about credibility in the blockchain space. And you have to do everything you can to show people, hey, I'm legit. I have the knowledge for it. Um, I'm a respected person in the field. Um, others have acknowledged my achievements. Um, so that's why I think the thought leadership aspect is quite significant. And what you can do, actually, I think, Everyone can can prepare something by themselves in that way. Um, if you just um, go to help a reporter out, which is uh, is haro.com, I think, or maybe even the full domain. It's a service by Cision, a big PR um, software company, and it essentially allows you to receive fresh journalist requests on a um, daily basis. I think you get three um, emails a day, and there are a lot of journalists there um, who need someone to comment on an aspect. Um, on an issue that they are currently writing about, um, even in the blockchain space. So what I recommend is um, signing up there, just answering requests that that fit your uh, your expertise, and you will get the the article features in the end, and the, that's very useful for your brand positioning, for your personal brand, and adds a lot of credibility. So that's something I would focus on, and also of course, um, content is king. Just put out content. Thought leadership is the form of content, which is very nice. Um, in addition to that, you could also start your own blog on a company website or become a regular contributor at, the, at another um, publication and just put up more content, educate people about the field. And once you're launching, you have the, the channels ready to um, and, the, and the trust to, to pull it off successfully, I think. I think this is one of the best questions to ask any business, because imagine, if you will, there are obviously blockchain businesses right now that are considering a PR agency and they're trying to tell who, who should I go with? Why should I go with them? Um, so when it comes to polygrowth, um, what, you know, what differentiates you? If you could kind of condense that down into, you know, a, a couple lines. I mean, what, what are you guys, what's unique? What, it, what makes you different from other PR agencies? Sure. Um, yeah, so at Polygrowth, we think, um, or our philosophy is actually um, that we want to create tailored solutions that perfectly fit the client's problems. And what we noticed is that in the, in, in the PR um, industry, many PR agencies, they're just about charging an upfront retainer. They want $20,000 uh, upfront, and then they will deliver um, here and there some coverage. But in many cases, the, the clients are not happy in the end with the results. And that's something we want to tackle. We want to offer, we, we always want to provide an offer um, that the client is happy with um, in the first place. So that, for example, um, one client might have a problem with generating leads. So we want to create an offer that is focused on that. Another client um, wants to create or wants to make um, B2B connections. So we create a plan up before actually closing the deal and showing how we can achieve this, what it will cost and um, how long it will take. And thus always creates a, a solution which um, can really benefit the client and which is not something that has been pre-packaged that um, he doesn't really care about. Um, because like I said, many PR agencies, especially in blockchain, they have a package, you get on Content Telegraph, you get there, you get there, you get there. But maybe that's not what the cl uh, client needs. Maybe he needs more like evergreen conversion PR. Um, or maybe he needs more thought leadership because he wants to position himself as, a, as an authority, as, wants to build his personal brand. So every client is different and many agencies offer um, basic packages, um, but that's just 
not something that can work very well. So we aim to um, to provide something that has actually a value and on a, on an individual basis. Well, you have officially made it uh, to the end of a chain leader show. We know about the company, but tell us a little bit about Simon. What are you most passionate about right now? What are those hobbies? Who are you in love with, man? Just just give it give it to us. Um, well, so I'm personally in love um, with the internet. I <laughs> and it sounds a bit geeky, but um, honestly, I think the internet is like the the greatest thing that has ever ever happened to mankind because you just have this incredible um, um, package of knowledge that you can access at any time, and there's just so much to learn on the internet. You can learn any skill you want um, by looking up guides, by watching a YouTube video, uh, reading a blog post. Besides that, um, I I like to do uh, I like to go to the gym. I like to go scuba diving. I like to go skiing. So um, I also enjoy the nature around me a lot. And recently, I started uh, to 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 develop an interest into watches. Um, oh, <laughs> he bought his first is... Rolex, guys. Uh oh, <laughs> let's see the Rolex. Come on. Let's see it. <laughs> no, I don't have it. I don't have a Rolex. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually just starting to to get interested in in this uh, field because it's in, in a in a on the one hand I love the internet, but on the other hand I can also feel like that everything is becoming so industrialized, everything is becoming digital, and I think it's quite nice to to have a to have something that is completely mechanical that that is like very um that is very fine tuned that that yeah. costs a lot of uh, handwork. So um, I think that's very interesting, but I didn't really buy um, a, a big watch yet, but I'm doing a lot of research um, to, to find the right one for me. Um, so kind of like I'm all, also a little bit of a perfectionist there and I always try to find the best solution for me. Um, but that's also what I want to offer um, to my clients. So I think that's a philosophy that just um, um, yeah, is, is there my entire life already. Well, Simon, thank you again for being on today, man. Uh, tell people where they can find you. Where can we where can we send them? Um, yeah, well, you can find me on LinkedIn. You can find me on Twitter. Um, you can go on my website, polygrowth.io. You can go on Straight Insider, straightinsider.com. Um, there are a lot of You're ways everywhere. to find me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well. That was another great podcast. We will see you guys next time. Simon, it's been great. Jonathan, sign it off. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Take care. For more episodes like this, make sure you subscribe on your favorite platform and follow us on LinkedIn. If you'd like help scaling your blockchain company with a custom authority building approach to lead generation, reach out to us at chainleads.co. We'll see you next time on Chain Leaders. Chain Leaders.